Hey everyone. So today I'm going to be going over DIM, Destiny Item Manager. If you have been playing Destiny for any amount of time, you for sure know what this is, but maybe if you're new or you're coming back, this is going to be a nice guide on how to make a build and more importantly, how to make multiple builds to easily be able to swap between them if needed. It's always nice to have different play styles ready to go for whatever activity you are looking to do. So with that being said, the, we will be going over some advanced, more advanced parts of it, uh, but for the most part, this is actually pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So to start off, uh, obviously, Dim shows you your entire loadout. I'll include a link in the description for destinyitemmanager.com. You can link your Bungie account. It takes two seconds. It's super easy, but... In this case, we're going to be making a Warlock build So, uh, for, for next season. So what I'm going to do is go to Loadouts right from the top right here. And then Loadouts is going to show you everything that you currently have. In this case, I've got some pretty sweet, uh, <laughs> pretty menacing names here for, for my builds. Uh, I don't know. I just like to uh, come up with creative names so I remember kind of what they're about. But... We're going to be creating a new one, so we can actually go to Loadout Optimizer. And then this is actually kind of nice because it shows us what uh, what stats we want to prioritize. It, it shows the tens of thousands of combinations, uh, 94,000 uh, combinations of armor on uh, my account just for my Warlock. So I don't want to go through that many combinations. I don't even want to think about it. I want a computer to do it for me. So that's exactly what this is for. We're going to make sure we get the most efficient stats possible. Obviously, resilience is what we're going to be shooting for because the 40% damage reduction, in case you're maybe coming back, uh, resilience got buffed a lot. It is really good now. So in PvE, you get 40% damage reduction. So we want to shoot for tier 10 uh, for that because of how good it is. But let's just say because we can put our plus 10 mods in there uh, for resilience, we can say, you know, maybe you don't have great resilience gear on your account. That's okay. You can say, I want it. Maybe if I have at least tier seven, let's show us all the gear that has that. And then in this case, I've got plenty because I farmed a lot of resist resistance gear over this season, or resilience gear. Um, but we can also choose discipline. Maybe I also like discipline, uh, which I do. It is also good to have your grenades. Arc grenades are going to be pretty solid, it's looking like. So uh, I have plenty of really, really good builds here. But what I also want to do is most builds, chances are, you're going to have an exotic you want to build around. So personally, I always like to start off with an exotic. So I can select my exotic. In this case, I'm using the glorious Crown of Tempest that Xur sold a few weeks back. I hope that you were able to get this. It was really, really good. Uh, 70 base stat roll in all the right places. It's beautiful. So I am very excited to use that next season. But what we're going to do here now is it is only showing us builds with this exotic. Now what's cool is if you have multiple exotics, like if I were to have multiple Crown of Tempests, it's going to show me all the different builds with all of my Crown of Tempests. So whichever one meets the stat requirements that I'm looking for, it's going to show me the best one, which is nice. So now that we have our exotic pinned, we can go down the list, make sure all this is correct. If you're a hunter, obviously go 100 mobility uh, if that's something that you want to shoot for. Sort the stats however you want. You can actually drag these around to prioritize them, which I, I do like as well. Moving down to this spot here, I do like to not lock the element. What that means is obviously different mods have different affinities associated with them occasionally. Like Grenade Kickstart, for example, is a stasis only glove mod. So if I had solar gloves, I can see this one's void, it would tell me, hey, this doesn't fit on this, but I can always just change the affinity, which is nice. So it's going to let me know all that, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here. We'll, we'll go over that in a second. But uh, I don't like to lock the element, and I do always want to assume that the piece is masterworked, because if it's a good build with good stats, uh, why wouldn't you want to masterwork it? Obviously, the more energy you have in your 
armor, the more mods you can make, or more mods you can fit, which means the better your build is going to be. So always masterwork the, your builds, because that is the end goal of uh, every time you make a build, obviously. So next what I'm going to do here is I might break away for a second while I search for a couple mods that I want to throw on, and I will be right back. Give me one second. Okay, so I came back, I only have seven here. Obviously you're gonna want more than seven mods uh, on, but just to show you kind of the different affinities and what happens. So in this top slot here, you'll see I have Void Gloves. Um, pretty solid stats on that, I would say. Uh, but it wants me to switch to Stasis because Melee Kickstart is a Stasis only mod. Right here, you can see that. So it's telling me, hey, you've got to switch this over to stasis. If you tried to, uh, if you did not switch the affinity for this glove, but you save the build, Dim is going to get confused and it'll say, hey, this is not a stasis glove. So it's just not going to equip any mods there. Uh, I've seen that uh, frustrate people more times than not. So make sure you get your affinity set up. It does tell you right here. So something to keep in mind. But once I've found the uh, set that I like, keep in mind too, you've got your plus five and plus 10 mods just to help out. Uh, this one, for example, if I wanted to get up to 40 intellect, I would need a plus five intellect mod. Anytime you see a yellow number here, that means that it is at least five toward the next uh, tier. So I try to avoid yellow as much as I can if I don't want to put a plus five mod in there, just something to keep in mind. But all that being said is probably the most important part. You can do this uh, before you add your mods if you want, up to you. But as long as while you're on this screen, you visit the select subclass. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be using Void with Crown of Tempest, but just for the purpose of the example. What I would do here is go to Customize Subclass and the fragments here, some of them in every subclass, uh, for three, the 3.0s, it has a it, it will either remove or add stat bonuses to your uh, to your build here. So I've seen a lot where someone says, "Hey, I was supposed to have 100 strength on this build. What what is happening uh, when they equip their loadout? You know, you might have Echo of Provision on. That's why why it's only showing 90. Or Echo of Undermining is subtracting 20 from your discipline." So make sure while you're on this screen, choose a subclass you want, choose the fragments, grenades, get all that set because it's going to save all that for you, which is really helpful. Um, we're not going to be using void with, with crown though. So arc 3.0 is not out yet. Otherwise I would show a, uh, an example of that, but tomorrow we've got less than a day left to mess with arc 3.0. I'm pretty excited. Uh, now what's uh, nice is we can go ahead and save the build that we want so I have already made one, but uh, just to show you how to do that, you would save the loadout. You can also equip the loadout in game and equip your mods there, up to you, whatever you wanna do. But I'm gonna save this uh, test and then we'll save that just so we have the armor and mods set. What I can do now is I'll go back to my inventory And I can now see I've got test two right there. Um, the one that I actually made right before this video is uh, arc right here. So I have all my mods, everything set up. Hopefully this works well with the arc 3.0. I think it's, it was pretty fun. I was messing around with it today. But what I like about this is it also saves all of the transmog that I have on my uh, on my character here. So whatever ornaments I have equipped, whatever shader, it's gonna remember that. And what's cool too is even if this, let's say this chess piece or um, even class item was used in a different build, that's okay. You can actually save multiple transmog per piece of armor. So you can keep your look, if you like to switch up your look per build like I do, uh, it makes it nice and easy for you to do that. So uh, you can save the fashion, obviously add in whatever weapons you want with the build. You can always change this on the fly and then you are good to go. So I'm actually gonna show what it looks like. Um, oh, before I do that, I'm sorry. This is something that I don't really see people talk about in dim loadouts. Um, 
you can actually make notes on here. I don't know why this is not more obvious and they could probably add more in here, but um, if you drag this down, it'll actually make your notes area bigger. If you are someone like me who has five builds per class, um, I'll show you what, what some of my notes are here for my stasis one. Uh, sometimes you can forget what the build was when you made it, even though it was really good. I don't like to forget, so I actually write a few sentences on, on what I was doing, what I was thinking when I made it. So I can go back and say, oh, okay, that's that's the loop that I was going for. I'll sometimes put in the aspects and fragments just to, to help out as well. Maybe the combat style mods that I've chosen as well. So write notes. It's helpful. If you have you know 15 total builds across all three classes, there's no way you're going to remember all that. So uh, make sure to write some notes to help yourself out. But now that we are done, what I can do is I'm going to show my game screen what happens here all you have to do is if i want to equip that new arc build i made boom you'll see dim is working and i'm going to try and show as well what's happening in my game but it is equipping all of my armor all of the transmog i have all the mods weapons and you can actually set it to remove any current items that you had in your inventory as well so you're uh, full loadout is nice and clean. It's only full with stuff that you actually want. And it takes like 15 seconds. So if you can take the time to make the build that you like, it's so easy to swap back and forth later. This is going to come in handy during the next crazy few days of a new season. You've got King's Fall, crossing my fingers. I think that's what it is. Coming back on Friday. So instead of going individually into every piece of armor and trying to remember what mods you had for whatever subclass you were using, you're just not going to remember it. So this is very helpful. Uh, but that is it for this one. There is plenty more to talk about with Destiny Item Manager. This is just what I have found useful in my uh, workflow with so many hours messing with Destiny Item Manager. So I would appreciate uh, if you did like the video, if you learned something, Make sure to leave me a like, leave me a comment with anything that you'd like to see in the future. I'm really excited to make some more guides for season 18, so expect those. I am just starting this YouTube channel, but I am not going anywhere. We're going to be make, making a lot of videos coming up, so super excited. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.